In 2018, an estimated 752,000 new cancer cases and 506,000 cancer deaths occurred in Sub-Saharan Africa. Over one-third of all cervical cancer deaths globally occur in Sub-Saharan Africa. Statistics like this elicits the need for Africa to rise and tackle the burden of cancer on the continent and seek for how best to manage it. On this year's observance of World Cancer Day, attention is on the rise in cancer cases on the continent. World Cancer Day is observed annually on the 4th of February among various international communities around the world. This year's theme is Close the Care Gap and marks the start of a three-year campaign to raise global awareness around the world, especially in African regions. A consultant radiation and clinical oncologist at the University of Medical Science Teaching Hospital at Kure, Southwest Nigeria, Dr. Indidi Okunuga joins me on the news as we take a look at the menace of cancer on the African continent. Hello and uh, thanks for joining us, Dr. Okunuga. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's start by getting some education tonight. What are the types of cancers and the ones that are prevalent in Africa? When we are talking about types of cancers, cancer can occur in any part of the body, from the head to the soles of the feet. So we're talking about cancer, we can have cancer of the eye, the nose, the bone, the bowel, any organ you can think of in the body, cancer can arise from such organs. But there are peculiar organ uh, cancers that are peculiar to women and those that are peculiar to men. So for us in Africa, the commonest cancer in women is the breast cancer. And for the men, it is the prostate cancer. For the women also, the second most common is the cervical cancer and followed by the prostate cancer for men, and then we have liver cancer and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and leukemia. So it follows that order. Now, Dr. Kunuga, the theme for this year's observance is close the care gap. What is the significance of this theme to the average African? When we are talking about the theme, it's a three-year plan, three-year team, and we are starting this year. Close the care gap. What we are trying to say is that there should be equity when it comes to cancer care. Most times, patients don't get standard and affordable care, and that gap must be closed. You know, we must stop the barrier, you know, between when we're talking about the management of cancer. So this year's team is just trying to create an awareness that there should be equity when it comes to the management of cancer. There should be available and affordable tools and equipment in the management of cancer. An average cancer patient should be able to afford standard and adequate and recommended care. I'm happy you mentioned uh, standard and recommended care. And that leads me to this question. One major issue that has been lingering for years on the continent is the few testing and screening centers uh, for cancer in Africa. What has been done about this and how can this be tackled? Yes, when we are talking about screening centers in Africa, we have screening centers and these screening centers and diagnostic centers are available at government-owned hospitals. There are some private hospitals too that um, you know, have these facilities. But most of the time, when a patient has cancer or is diagnosed with cancer, the best care is usually given in a government-owned hospital. So we have the screening facilities and equipment available, but they are not adequate enough. We don't have, you know, they are not properly funded, and then we don't have enough personnel. So we have these facilities, but they are not well equipped, and we don't have enough personnel. So those are the challenges we have when it comes to screening in cancer management. Now, some reports we see in uh, medical journals are quite a cause for concern. Africa's cancer cases are steady uh, rising, they're, they're uh, on a rise. What's the continent doing wrong and what might be responsible for this uh, rise in cancer cases? That's a very true fact. We realize that the cancer incidence is rising, especially in Africa. And I think the reason is because there's an increase in the use or the exposure to the risk factors, you know, associated with cancer. And then there's an increase in population 
the elderly population, there's an increase in population, and this population growth is not really correlating with the available resources to manage this cancer patient. And so you have a situation where the population is increasing and the uh, available resources are not adequate enough to cover for the increase in population. Another reason we have seen is that um, there is more exposure to these risk factors. We have people now taking more fatty diets. We have people not exercising regularly. We have people taking more tobacco and uh, alcohol intake. And so these risk factors are now being you know, taken in high um, quantity compared to mm. the previous years. And so for this um, excessive or increased exposure to such factors, most cancer cases are now in increase. And so we have this increased prevalence and increased number in cancer cases. Now, finally, Dr. Okunuga, before I let you go, uh, with the advent of COVID-19, it seems attention uh, was diverted from conditions uh, such as cancer. How best do you think African governments can uh, make more commitments to cancer care? Thank you very much. Um, we all know that COVID-19 has taken a toll you know, on us all, even in Africa. You know, the sit at home, the staying at home and all the protocols has made, you know, access to care. It hasn't been well, you know, assessed. And so the advice most times is that our government should be able to provide more diagnostic and screening facilities or materials. By the time more of this has been produced, we now have people coming out for more screening. The awareness is there and then people now coming out for more screening, and then we have more early presentation. And so by the time patients are coming with early stages of the cancer, you know, prognosis is better, and we have reduced mm. mortality. Another thing is that the government should help with funding. We realize that um, cancer is not well-funded. Most of these patients cannot even afford, you know, standard care. An average cancer patient cannot afford the full treatment. And so if governments can help okay. in whatever way they can to uh, you know, help in funding cancer. Then lastly, I believe that governments should you know, provide policies that will favor cancer care and cancer management. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on NC Continental Prime, Dr. Ndidi Okunoga. We do appreciate your contribution and uh, we hope uh, to move towards uh, reducing uh, cancer prevalence on the continent. Thank you. Thank you very much.